Welcome everyone. Uh, I'm glad you all could make it in. And if anybody tells you that they're having trouble, um, have them just go ahead and call in and raise their hand um, because you should have that option on their smartphone anyway. So if they can do that, and they want to speak or you know be introduced being brought into a panel we can do it that way um, but what i'll do right now is um just say hello to everybody welcome we have seven board members from the youth and ed committee um, and we have our first our guests for our first item which is the expansion of the harbor school on governor's island and so um, with us is Nan Richardson and Andy can you Care to. Thank you. Um, and we, uh, they uh, helped, uh, like pretty much wrote the resolution that is in front of you today. Um, as you remember, everyone, they were with us last month. And we are doing, I wanted to just share with you some of the things that have happened between meetings. Um, we have uh, not only the resolution in front of you that really pushes the SCA and the DOE to identify a site for a permanent location for their pool, gym, additional classroom space that you see them ask for in this resolution. Um, between meetings, we've also been working on the temporary solution. And we have connected with a marine engineer who pretty much knows every inch of the New York City shoreline. He is one of the directors of the Billion Oyster Project. He is um, one of the co-owners over at the One Brooklyn um, Marina. And we are working with him to help identify that place and develop resources for this temporary barge pool. So that's in process. And um, what we do wanna share is that while that is one of the, the asks of this resolution, that the primary goal of the resolution is to the permanent solution. Um, we have an opportunity in this coming month or so to make an impact with the other things that are coming in front of the Governor's Island Trust and the City of New York um, to make sure that we have a seat at the table with this. There's some happening, whether it's a ULARP happening, and there's some discussion about what's going to happen with certain buildings on the island. And so on this resolution, we have identified the buildings that the Harbor School feels as though are the best fit for them for this purpose. They've received feedback from the SCA that this is a logical you know, ask, but there's been some handing back and forth between the Governor's Island Trust and the SCA on, is it money, is it the site, is it money, is it the site? And we know this because we've been here a hundred times before with our schools. And so our goal for this is to get everybody to focus at the same time. We have the SCA saying that they're committed to it. And we have the Governor's Island Trust on a recent call with the city council saying they too are prioritizing this. So this resolution is a further support of that in a timely manner. They cite this as they go to you know, commit the space on the island in these upcoming months. So if anybody has any questions for me or for Nan or, or Amy, please, you know, board members speak now and engage in some conversation about it. Does everybody have time with the resolution? It just came today, sorry. If you have them, take, take your time. We have a, we don't have many things to do tonight. So if you want to take your time and read through it now, please do. Okay. 
Has this also been emailed to us? That uh, I I apologize. This is Wendy. I'm on my phone, so it's a little hard to read. Jen, did you serve before the meeting? Uh, I haven't been able to. What I can do is I can go ahead and email that out, or I can share that as a link for in a chat box. Yeah, the link in the yeah. top box works if that's easier. Whatever's easier for you, fine. And, and Tricia, quick question. Sorry if you mentioned this and I missed it. Are we asking just for siting or siting and funding? Both. Because yeah, it you. tends to be a little bit of a buck passing happening. So yep. we just covered all the bases. And Nan, feel free to jump in. I think your mic is open. So please feel free to jump in. And well, I was I was just going to say um, we'd be happy to read it aloud too if that helps Wendy or anybody else that's on the phone. It's not that long. Um, sure. Let's do that. That's a great idea. Go ahead. Sorry, just one just one quick question before we read it aloud because um, it, it might be relevant for reference here. Do we know when Governor's Island submits its budget to the city? Uh, have they already done that for the upcoming calendar year? Do we know? And if, if not, do you want to push to have this prioritized on, on the GI submission? Well, I mean, this mostly, I mean, at least as far as I know, and you can correct me, I mean, this is mostly SCA money and money you have raised combined, correct? Correct. Yes. Are you expecting anything from Governor's Island? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't know the Governor's Island ever paid out in this fashion at all. No, so, so, no. Sorry, not Governor's Island, the city. So go, as I understand, okay. Governor's Island submits an annual budget to the city with a request for funding for certain aspects of, of oh. activity on the island. Yeah. Just like we do as a community board of some sort. I don't know whether this would come over there purview. It's a really interesting question because we're we're going after the typical channels, which right now are the SCA, and the SCA, you know, has said to the Harbor School that they have to do some fundraising that they cannot justify a pool um, straight out for the school, given what's happening, with COVID, and the city budget. So that so that good faith, good this faith, this lot of money, a lot of money. And then the rest of it is getting an echo. Can you guys hear that? You guys yeah. hear that? Yeah. It was an echo. Echo. Oh, now it, you too, Jeff. You too, Jeff. Hmm. Can hmm. you check settings? Can you like check everybody. these settings? It looks like everybody. It's everybody. <laughs> it's everybody. <laughs> If somebody has the somebody meeting up, the meeting up pieces, pieces. They can, that can cause an echo. An echo. I've never seen it happen for everyone. Never though. seen it happen for everyone though. I'm gonna go ahead and mute everybody. I'm gonna go ahead and mute everybody. That works. One moment. Hello, can everyone hear me? Am I echoing? Am I echoing? Oh. Yes. I don't echo. Yeah. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can hear you without an echo. Without an echo. And I hear you without an echo, Andrew. I hear myself with an I hear myself with Yeah, Andrew, you have an echo. Yeah, Andrew, you have an echo. Hmm. Not for me. Uh, everyone has a huge everyone echo. Everyone has a huge echo. Not for me. Yeah, for, for, yeah, a, couple for, of, for a couple of It's fine, but it's for me. For me. For me. Apologies, everyone. I'm going Apologies, to do everyone. I'm going to do that. I can use that. I can use that. Solve this issue. Solve this issue. 
We might have to might jump have off and jump back and up. We may have to jump on and back on. on. I'm not sure if that would sure work. This is the first time this has happened. I think it's worth the try. Whatever we're trying. Try, whatever we're trying. Okay, Trisha, since I'm the okay, host, Trisha, I, I'm the host. Oh. I, I think we all I think we go out all and try to come back in. And try to come back in. Right. I don't see any other way I don't to, see make any other to make it. Have we tried muting Jen and giving Trisha host? Ownership. I didn't hear an echo. All of a sudden, it's working. Yeah, that's interesting, Andrew. So I think it's. I think it was Jen's line. Jen just went on mute. Okay. Jen, can you come off mute and speak again and see what happens? Yeah. Can everyone hear me? My echo. Without an echo. Looks like we're fixing. That's strange. Okay. Oh. If, uh. See, off. Yeah, so she'll be coming back on. And Wendy um, came back in. Yeah, Jeff logged off. So, let's see, is it me? No, oh. is that? I feel. I feel like when I hit the document to read it, that's just when it happened. Interesting. We had Jen and I'm sorry. We had Nan and Jeff jump off. So I don't know if they were one of the sources, but we'll see. All right, there's Nan. I'm waiting for Josh. Nan, can you try to talk and see what happens? Can you hear me? Testing yeah. one, two, three. Perfect. Much better. Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm going to get my. We haven't restarted, correct? I just want to make sure I didn't jump, fall off. No, we haven't restarted. We were just waiting for Jeff, who's now not here. Do you see him, Jen? Yeah. Yep. Oh, there he is. Okay. Hi, Jeff. Can you hear us? Yeah, I hear you. I, I restarted. I thought we were all restarting. That's what I heard people saying. So I left the meeting and I came back. Yes, it's all good. So whatever we did worked. <laughs> so, okay. Welcome back, everyone. And uh, uh, we were just about to have Nan read 
the resolution. So Nan, if you want to go ahead. Okay, great. Um, whereas the New York Harbor School's core mission has not been fully fulfilled in the last 17 years as a result of not having proper facilities. Whereas the Harbor School is overcrowded and sees her in high demand as the only maritime marine school in New York City with a growth area in jobs that need the diversity Harbor students represent proudly and well. Whereas the Harbor School has been asking for an aquatic training center as a central need in a program that involves daily teaching on the water and in boats. Whereas the Harbor School was promised a gym and 12 additional classrooms, and that ask was funded um, by the DOE SCA in 2018 after a previous request in 2012 was funded and rescinded in 2014. Whereas the DOE's only proffered option to date was to site the Harbor School gym in the only small patch of green space the school has on an island that measures 172 acres in area. Whereas the trust for Governor's Island and DOE has stated that building 555, 12 classrooms, has been reserved for New York Harbor School since 2018, but have yet to deliver the building to the school. Whereas at its founding, the Harbor School taught all students how to swim as a graduation requirement, a critical skill for marine jobs. They were forced to drop that skill after moving to Governor's Island, as the school had no way to train the students due to the lack of a pool. As the school's only transportation access is by ferry and many aspects of the marine-based curriculum involved in water engagement, this is a safety issue as well as an equity issue. Therefore, given the delays and lack of delivery of additional academic spaces, gym, auditorium, or a pool, the committee recommends the New York Harbor School be awarded by TGI Building 515, the former hospital, or another existing building of adequate space uh, as a part of its campus to enable the facilities needed for it to fulfill its mission, and that build out is funded by the SCA DOE. Therefore, further, the committee recommends that effective immediately, the Trust for Governors Island name a temporary space for a pool facility to be used by the New York Harbor School that can be occupied for up to seven years until the permanent building becomes available. And I'm sorry, what this leaves out is, Tricia, your edit about um, something about, you know, with our consultation, space, um, site, with our consultation. I'm, I'm reading, I think, the Pennsylvania version. Yes. Um, I thought I had put that in there. Oh, no, no. Here, it's on the website. I couldn't see the website before. With yeah. the school's directors in consult. So, consult. Because yeah. oftentimes they're going to cite something you don't want. <coughs> yeah. <coughs> Anybody have any questions? None at all. It's great. It's a great. <laughs> it's a great resolution. Super comprehensive. So. If, I'll give it a few more minutes to see if anybody has any thoughts or ideas. If not, we'll take it to a vote. The great news here is that everybody seems to be ready to go. It's definitely very reminiscent of that what we've been through with schools being approved where the seats are funded and they say they can't find a site and then we find a site and they say why the site can't work or they can't really commit to the site and then all of a sudden it just happens and we're in this space in between but there's nobody pushing back saying that this should not happen so uh we're hoping the specifics here will help them you know, come together, which of course we're also working on outside meetings. Um, yeah, I don't know if you saw my email this afternoon to you, Tricia, that Lorraine Grilla said to me this morning that there was another building that SEA had looked at, but she mm -hmm. didn't for some reason have that information before her. So 
um, even though she was very clear that the hospital building was her preferred site um, and has been saying that to me for two years now, um, I wonder what this other building might be. Yeah, really good question. And, you know, I would imagine, Nan, you're pretty familiar with the office by now, but certainly we can find out what it was. The only concern I would have, seeing that she mentioned that to you today, would be that if she's getting pushed back on the hospital, she might eventually turn her attention to that building. So, um, you know, we should really stay strong in the fact that you don't just need a pool. You know, you're really owed a gym and you need more classroom space. And they've funded that to a large extent already. And we've seen several times downtown how, you know, most recently with the Millennium Gym, how you can raise a million and a half and then you can lose the momentum when they can't find a space. There were plenty of spaces for this gym. They just weren't incredibly straightforward and they required longer leases than the DOE was comfortable with. But we have an opportunity with the change over in some of the, um, the elected officials this coming year with the ULR happening. So I really feel as though this is the time to a lot of pressure on people to move forward with a space that you really feel will best serve your program. Um, you know, we've turned down places that they've come up with in the past because they just weren't right. And vice versa, they've turned down sites that, that we thought were right, like where the Trinity Place School is going in. there, And now they're building there. So, um, so we just, I really think that's why I think the off, you know, the directors at the school have to be part of that decision because it is your mission and the space has to be appropriate and they have admitted that space could work. And so let's focus on that space. If you think that's your space, hear what they have to say about the other space, but. Okay. You know, okay. you've done a lot of work on the island. You know what you need. Anybody, anybody else? Any ideas, thoughts, questions, concerns? I echo you, Tricia, that I think it, timing wise, this makes, uh, there's a lot of things happening. So I, I'm crossing fingers for everybody. Uh, me too. Yeah, All right, I was interested to, to, sorry, I was interested to hear from Lorraine Grillo that she's retiring too. And I said, oh no, you're not retiring until we get this done. <laughs> this is on her bucket list. This is what she shared. Yeah, yeah. So that made me feel really good. It's, me too. You know, we'll hold, her, we'll hold her to that. So, all right. Well, if there's no further questions, comments, we'll go to a vote. Jen, would you like to do a roll call for us? Sure. Someone, a member of the floor can call the question and someone else second, please. Can I call the question? I'll call I it. Second it. I second it. Okay. We'll go ahead and Trisha. Yes. Jeff. Yes. Sarah Castle. Yes. Wendy. Wendy. Yes. Daron? Oh, yes. Devin's not here. Dennis not here. Uh, Palin? Yes. Bob's not here. Um, Judith. No. Judith? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Yes. Thank you. Andrew? Zelter, yes. Okay. And Sarah E. She dropped off, it looks like. Let me see. You okay. I think she oh. yeah, I think she did. Okay. I just texted her. 
Okay. Hey guys. Hi. Um, hello, it's me, Bob. Oh, hey, Bob. Okay. I had trouble. I had trouble with the internet. Um, can I just ask what resolution you're voting on? We are voting on the Harbor School. Oh, okay. Resolution. Thank you. Thank you. Have you had a chance to read it? I don't, but I trust that we're in the affirmative on that. I'd like to get a copy of the next resolution. Um, I'll try to lo locate that. But yes, I vote yes. Okay. It's if, it's if everybody else is voting yes, I'm voting yes. <laughs> they are, and we it's lost Sarah, but I think we have a quorum, right, Jen? We hey, did. I showed up. I showed up right on time. Okay. You did. Sarah dropped off right when you came on, so it was amazing. There's she limited internet me. access in Tribeca. <laughs> um, okay, great. The resolution unanimously passes. That's wonderful. We're really excited to take that to our full board. Um, and then I'll be in touch with you between meetings. Um, thank you again for your help with this today. Um, you guys are amazing. You are amazing partners. So we really appreciate it. We thank you very much for all your help and your Absolutely. support. You got it. Much thank you very so much. for us. Absolutely. Yes. We're going to be sticking with it all the way. All right. Fabulous. So we'll move on to our um, second item that just got sent to me yesterday. Um, and is um, some concern that the New York City educators and school staff were not among the first group um, designated by the city to get the vaccine. And so I intend to write a resolution um, within the next week that is going to be about prioritizing our educators because we're never going to have a momentum in terms of being able to go back to school and stay in school until we can protect our teachers and principals, in my view. So we are here to discuss this. If anybody wants to share different points of view or add to this discussion in any way, but it was surprising to me that they weren't um, right behind healthcare workers. And so, you know, I felt it was worthy of a resolution. Uh, Trisha, this is Judy. I agree with you. Um, teachers in particular are essential workers and um, they should be treated as such. Yeah. Especially seeing this start stop thing we're dealing with right now. It's, you know, very hard on our kids. Trisha, also the uh, janitors and the custodians and the, the service workers in the cafeteria and the secretaries, because they all come in contact with the students all the school employees that's a good point thank you sarah um guys i haven't seen the resolution there is I am, <laughs> i'm sure it does not include after school programs which are being uh not represented by unions uh but being sent into after school programs our learning labs program serving 276 89 234 is fully enrolled every day we there's no room in it anymore and i would appreciate if someone could say learning labs and after school work is there i had a meeting with dycd asking them what's the plan i don't want my people getting sick and uh Personally, I, I would, I don't know why we just don't wait eight more weeks to, you know, everybody gets vaccinated and, you know, open the schools up. Middle school programs are still not open, but if they do open them up, we think after school programs, learning labs and should be, and I've been looking into private testing and private vaccines to no avail, but I'm, I'm kind of worried about my staff and I'm sure there are countless amounts of other community organizations and schools that are having the same questions. Uh, we're, we're getting together tomorrow to, so if that could just be in, inserted in there too. Absolutely, got it. Anybody else? I can't believe they're not, uh, you know, since I've, I can't believe they're not, commenting on on teachers uh 
going in there, um, going home to their families. I do know that some of the health department workers that are going into the uh, schools are um, are being uh, prioritized. Uh, but I, I don't know why they would be different than a school person. Um, I don't either because they're talking general population end of April and across the whole school year. So th I think this is an incredibly important thing to be talking about right now as Definitely. the state and city goes to ration these things. So, I'm sure you're at the forefront of this. People are thinking about it, but even though if we don't get this, the if we don't get at the same time as the firemen uh, will at least get, or the hospital workers will at least be getting, you know, those teachers will, will be getting something. Absolutely. Okay, great. So um, you can expect the, the whereas and therefore be it resolves to look like just defining the importance of, you know, getting our kids back to school, um, Fact that you know how I will get my data straight on how many teachers have felt fallen ill this fall. Um, mental health aspects of children not being able to be at school, and then therefore be resolved that they are within the same path as you know right behind our frontline healthcare workers. So with that in mind, um, I would love to move to a vote on this as well. Trisha, if we go ahead and ask someone on the floor to call the question. I call the question. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Trisha? Mm -hmm. Yes. Jeff? Yes. Sarah Castle? Yes. Wendy? Yes. Darwin? Yes. Jalen? Yes. Bob? Yes. Judith? Yes. Andrew? Zelter, yes. See Sarah E. Sarah? Sarah E. Sarah E. can't get back in. She felt. Yes, I'm on. Oh, she's back. Okay, it's motion passes. Excellent. Thank you, everyone. Got two great things tonight. And that is the whole agenda. Um, so thank you all for coming. It was really important that you were here to vote. And both of these really needed the support. So I appreciate it. And I wish you all, if not one of the strangest holiday seasons, I hope right. it's full of love and health and yes, yes. everybody stays safe and keep some, some morale up. And yep. uh, yep. I look forward to talking to you all at the full board. Thank you, Tricia. Thank you as always. All right, everybody. everybody. Thank you again. Bye.